Hello and welcome back to What's Bubbling in Zimbrol. I'm Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're going to continue to take a look at what's new in Zim017. So we hit the Zim017 here. We've already talked about the chatbot, Rive, the physics, the these three things all in one bubbling. And now I'd like to take you through some of the, the bubblings in the updates themselves. So I'm hitting Zim updates here. There's the chatbot. We'll scroll down until we find some of the ones that we like. Um, just note this one, I guess. Value and index. So current value, all current values have been replaced by value and selected index with index. So slider dot um, value is, can be used rather than slider dot current value. Okay, uh, they still work, but uh, these, these are easier. And that's for parameters and properties. Okay, so that's for things like radio buttons, sliders. Radio button has a selected index. Now it's just index. And there's our example. Okay, so note of that. That's not really what I want to talk about, though. Image, concaves, list accordions, selected indicators. Did all that. Um, we improved the accessibility docs in that we thought that Zim wasn't working for a bit, but then realized that um, this scan mode needs to be toggled off, and that allows you to hit the enter. All right, so that was a little snag that, uh, in accessibility, but we've mentioned that in the docs now, so just watch that yourself. SVG improvements. So we did some SVG improvements. That's not what I want to talk about. Globals. Is that worth an individual conversation? Probably not. I don't want to do a whole bubbling on this, so I'll just mention it here, I guess. We now have an item called globals in the docs, and it looks basically like this, telling you that these are the global variables that we use in Zim and what they are doing. Okay, in some of them, they're like groups of them, the ZAW group and the FSWHM group. But you can tell the other ones as well there. Okay, so uh, we did have some conversation over on Discord as to the many Zim Globals. And then we tried to reveal, and here we, we sort of organized and set up, these are the Zim Globals. Obviously, all of the classes and... Um, functions and stuff can also be global, but they don't have to be. So if you turn the namespace, you, if you use uh, ZNS right here, Zim namespace, if you set ZNS to false before you load Zim, before you import Zim, then none of those will be, oh, sorry, ZNS true, so Zim namespace true, then these are the only globals. So once you set ZNS true, these are the only globals. If you're using Zim like we usually do, where we've got all our stuff in, as globals, because we're a framework, <laughs> um, then uh, these are globals, but other things are globals, like circle is global, blue is global, etc. Okay, there you go. Up, up. And pages we talked about, general. So there's general fixes here, which you should probably check out. So if, certainly if you use Zim, check out our uh, general fixes as well. This is a compilation of breaks and here's patches since we launched. With respect to this, patches are kind of an interesting thing because if you think about it, let me just go down to the next version of Zim. Here are the patches from 016. So patch is 016. You might think that there's not much in 017 until you realize that those are the patches to 016. Okay, there's probably like 50 patches there. So that means 50 things that really are after 016. So this should be in 017. <laughs> um, so that's the way that we're working right now is we'll launch a version and then we patch that version with non-breaking things and emergencies, emergency breaking things. But so far, there hasn't been any emergency breaking things. So in general, these are non-breaking things. There is a possibility of a break. 
Um, but it's unlikely. And when that happens, it would have been broken anyway. It, it, like uh, we we're actually fixing a bug. So it was already broken and we just made it work properly. But sometimes things that are broken, people rely on it to be broken and don't expect it to be fixed. This would be a very unusual use case like that. All right. Um, and there's a, so there's a few breaks in those patches, but that's it, you know, just, and for the same reasons before. So what I was saying is that it may seem like Zim 017 doesn't have a total uh, lot to it. It was it was a fair bit to um, bring in the Rive. Uh, we did some good hard work on the physics. Chatbot is sort of outside of Zim in general. Um, and that's where, and then we have, of course, all those um, patches of the previous one. Uh, but there were a couple other ones. This is where we did a lot of work with the site and the editor and kids. So here in this bubbling, that's what I want to take you through. I want to take you through what those look like. We'll do another bubbling on this one, data to and from node. Okay, but we're going to do a bubbling on here. And I haven't looked at these in a little while, but uh, let's have a look. And thank you, Carl, for um, all of these, or Carol, all of these uh, changes. Most of these came from him as he's working through stuff. So rather than attribute each one to him, I just sort of generally thanked up here. Create a new banner for Zim017 with the ride by. Okay, so this is general in sight. Carl didn't tell us to do that, although he probably did at some point. But anyway, um, this is just general updates to the site. So we've made a new banner. We've added the feature section. So remember, we each one now gets a feature section. Footer of Zim 10 banners changed to the current footer. Okay, that was actually a Carl thing. We used to have the old footer and Zim 10 banners. Sparkle sprite sheet that was uh, added to the um, assets. VR icon. Yeah, so in a couple different places, we've added a VR icon to show that Zim can be used in VR. Don't confuse that, though. Zim can be used in 3D um, and also in VR, okay? so But first and foremost, 3D is there. But So it's not like these are VR-only features. Uh, the, the whole Texture Active thing and Zim Studio, which actually could be part of this. That's kind of funny. Zim Studio might be considered Zim Zero. One seven. We added it in with all the other texture active, so it's already been added. Uh, but anyway, just remember that um, that's uh, optional in a sense. These uh, Zim texture active is actually works in three D too. So added Zim Expo and examples under collections. Oh, okay. So Expo has grown to be quite exciting. Let's just pop out to that. I'll drop this down at 11. And see the Zim site, and I'll keep a, keep a version of this around so I can reference it. OK, uh, if we go to examples under collections, you can find it, collections. Uh, there it is right there. So editor expo. So these are collections of things. And if I press on that, it now pops on out to the expo where we have the features. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Okay. Features, but in here, features, basic, mid, advanced, full. So now we go to basic and here's all the, the files for the basics. I wonder, I almost might want to start off with, I don't know. Anyway, mid, just there's more of them. <laughs> but that's okay. Perhaps if you're only looking through a few features, you're kind of going, uh, there aren't very many here. Oh, I see. There's these other things. Perhaps these other things could be a bit bigger. Anyway, mid-level. So mid-levels are biggest one. And any one of these you can press on and um, see it. Here's the code for that. There it is viewed if we want. Um, uh, there's the doc. So do we have it? So the docs, no, I don't think we do. Think, um, sorry, but anyway, here they are, of course, in here. And if you wanted to do the same, so say you're in the editor, click on zaps, find your uh, file there and hit expo. 
and that loads the expo for those ones right in here. But if you want, you can launch the expo page and see the full expo. And again, there are all of those as well. So you can get to it from the, the editor, but you can now also get to it from collections here. So that was sorry, something that was updated there. Um, added, when I reduced that down a size, this got smaller, this browser window. Added version section to Zim Map. Okay, great. Remove user scale one from viewport on Zim Code to fit. Okay, so that's just some viewport issues. Uh, to still zap, wonder assets, chatbot, add it. Okay, to all of those. So to all those tools, we made those fit better because those weren't fitting in mobile properly. And added a chatbot to Zim Code tools. So that was when we discovered it, when our chatbot didn't um, properly scale down. You had to pinch it rather than having it starting off pinched, but that's okay because we started with a user scale of one rather than just whatever it needed to be. <clears throat> okay, in the editor. Editor file menu now has a copy button that makes, uh, that makes a copy of the file. So let's go to the editor. I'm logged in. So under file, I can hit copy and replace button. So I can hit copy and that would make a copy of it. So that's right there. We used to say new and then ask, do you want to move this code over into the new file? And that was the way we copied it. Now we just hit copy and it ends up making a copy thing here that you need to uh, change to something else probably. And then you hit save. All right. So that's a copy button in the editor. Added sublinks to the expo page. All right, we saw those. Those were those sublinks. Added Zimbit's pizzazz icon example. Okay, we missed that one. Added listed by. All right, so um, you can make lists with the editor. And when you do, there is nothing that said who made the list. So now it's listed by the, your login author. So those lists are there. Docs is now in blue to match spells in blue. So down here, docs match the color uh, here. And um, in spells, which is, by the way, so here's spells. Let's open that up. Uh, gold bars, Zim Kids right here. And, oh, sorry, not spell, slate. Uh, so here's slate and there's the spells right there is blue. So spells takes you to the Zim version, or sorry, the, the kids version of the docs. So this is the kids version of the docs called spells. Whereas the editor has the grown up version of the docs. They're actually, the docs are the same. There's too many docs to actually change to the kids, but. There we go, uh, that's it. And also note the tips. So we're probably gonna say that that was also added. Once, so you toggle, once you're in once you're in tips, you can go to the docs. Once you're in the docs, uh, you should be able to come to the tips. <laughs> that not work? Tips, docs, I was rolled over it. Okay, so um, that's nice. So we've added the tips right inside there. Docs now toggles with tips, shortened height of file and load so it fits in a laptop better. That was kind of annoying to have to do, but uh, it's there. So we used to have the reference URLs and additional scripts and additional imports stacked, just like one, one line. So we've broken them into three areas here. Probably will do us okay. And that allows us to squash the height of this. We could have maybe used tabs and done one line with tabs, but I think this is the easiest to see everything and less work to do. <clears throat> so we're getting away with it for now. Added a refresh link to the top of zaps to catch new zaps. Made expo back button load the referring page and scroll to where, okay. So in Slate as well, when you went from expo back into your zaps list, it would be in a different, it would be back up at the top again, but we, I think, remembered it so that it um, stays where it is. Should we see if that works. So what are we talking about? If we're in the editor and we go into the zaps and I hit, uh, I can't do it there. I got to get to a zaps. There's an expo and we've got advanced here. 
So let's open up advanced and imagine that we're hitting expo. There's the expo and I hit back, advanced. Before, whenever we went back, it was going back up to the top of this and you had to scroll down to where you were. <clears throat> Add a QR code to slate or zap print page. Uh, okay, so if you're looking at an expo or a promo and you hit print, we now have slate there. So you can use a QR code to see the promo, to see it in full, to see it in the normal Zim editor, or to hit in the slate. And that used to say code, and we just decided that uh, it's no big deal. Once you're in the editor, you can then hit code. So we took away the code and let people, because this is used to print out in schools, for instance, and if there's no slate there, it's a little bit awkward. So that's why we've made the QR code for Slate. That allows kids to see this printout and go right into Slate if they want to. And added a hidden checkbox at the top of Files box to check to hide. Oh, right. It's not a hidden checkbox. It's the checkbox is called hidden. Check to hide the zap from search engines. So what does that look like? File hidden. Right there. If we decide to not show these to um, search engines, for instance, uh, then you can say hidden. And then it will have a, a, a robot, no follow in it. It's still there, but people would actually have to know this code right here to find it. So it's virtually uh, private. You know, nobody can really figure out that code. Right? So when you check that, it would you would be really the only one that knows that and search engines would not. Uh, we, we found some zaps that people had made that were kind of messy or didn't even work, etc. Like, I mean, the other option is to always hide them unless you say publish, but uh, that also doesn't work. I mean, at least they're coming there. It was found on a Google search. They're coming to Zim anyway, and they can look around, you know, that's the way we figure it. But if you really want them to be private, then then you can do it that way. Kids added uh, basic, mid, advanced, slate, expo zaps to a zaps page for Zim Kids. So back on kids here, we now have a full zaps page. So in the past, they would get their curriculum here of variables, functions, loops, events, etc., And then they would also get bugs to play around with and things to play around with. So these are these are tutorials that have three sections each. So each of these tutorials have three sections. And then you can make your own stuff in Slate. But now we've added zaps. So this used to be all extra links to Zimbits and a code pen, and um, which was fine. It, I mean, it gave the kids things to play with, but they were, weren't really for kids. And so what we decided to do with the help of Carl is, uh, hit the zaps here, or indeed, if you're here, you can hit the zaps there. And then you've got basic zaps that are more geared towards kids. You've got mid zaps, again, more geared towards kids, but mid-level, and then advanced zaps that are a bit harder, but still sort of fun to play with and stuff. Then we've got the zim bits. Uh, oh, as zaps, okay, so these, these will open up in the zaps editor, is, or in the slate editor as well. So this is in Slate, which means they can view the code here in Slate, copy it over to Slate as they work there as well. So that's nice. It took a little bit to get all of that stuff uh, working. Okay, so that's all there. And then uh, underneath that, that, oh, the very last one, sorry. Oh, not Slate, um, Zaps. The very last one there is the code pens, but these all go to code pen still. Okay, so I mean, things for the kids to play if they really want. Okay, that's that. Added an emoji help section under Slate. So how to add emojis. Uh, the Slate has a help section. Info panel tags now has a link to spells with featured tags at top. Okay, so when you go into Slate here and you're viewing a zap such as bit shape 
and you hit code. Oh, how do I hit the, how do I get the info on it? Oh, okay, so this is right back in Zaps. So if I want info on that, I hit info here. It tells me info and there's this link. Uh, there's the bunch of stuff there. So that's all what, um, that's all the uh, features used in it. And you hit spells like this. And now all those features are right here that you can find out. What does loc mean? And hit top. What does outline mean? And hit top. What does a rectangle do? Okay, so that, that allows you to quickly search through those and just toggle back to the top again. Once you look at a grid, here's a grid. Okay, top. Right, and these are the spells that are for this specific zap right here. Nice. Um, there we go. Whew. Okay, so that is, that's worked out from about something like close to probably 70 to 100 messages back and forth on the forum. So thank goodness not everybody is like Carl. Uh, and thank goodness that Carl's like Carl. I guess that... Um, it's really helpful to have all of this and it's not all it's, it's sort of unfortunate to kind of look through it all and choose what to take uh, but it is quite a lot <laughs> um, but thanks again and it has improved our our features uh, just uh, remember that um, you know this stuff is hard to make it's working in HTML and JavaScript and we actually use Zim for a lot of this believe it or not Zim has a variety of HTML features. So if we go to the, uh, the docs, I guess, and then under code, uh, most of these features under code work, well, all of the features under code work without, without Zim display objects, but uh, many of them. So there's one specific for HTML. It may not look like a lot, but when you add in Z, and uh, ZSS. So ZSS allows you to quickly add styles. That allows you to quickly access a tag. Like that's like dollar sign underscore. But Z is uh, what we're using a lot in there. That's like your um, queer, your selector where you can select via styles and apply um, multiple CSS to all of that set. So that's an HTML set. So that in combination with what we're doing in here. Uh, is very similar to the types of things that jQuery is doing, for instance, to make HTML easier, but we're using Zim to make it easier. So I would say we cut down code, j raw JavaScript code in half uh, using these um, efficiencies in Zim on the HTML side. <laughs> okay, and as you know, I've probably already seen this a number of times, we're down below half, 37% to other JavaScript Canvas frameworks for the most part, although we cheat a little bit and compare some to HTML and CSS in raw JavaScript, like a bunch of them there. And you can see that those ones are the ones that are really getting uh, beaten. Whereas other ones like Paper, P5.js, Pixie, etc., that are already Canvas frameworks are sitting more at the halfway. HTML is like really low down there. We're, we're beating those like 10% the amount of code on this example, whatever that example is. Oh. 10% uh, the amount of code on this example to make that in HTML versus to make that in Zim. Kind of makes sense though. Like the canvas is made for doing stuff like this. All right, and that, that's what you do. You just can poke on any of these and find out there's another 10% one. Okay, this was a game that was made with HTML and CSS and JavaScript. 10% to make it in Zim. This was old Zim too. Like, I don't know which version of Zim was this. Yeah, our old template. Uh, if you go settings here, uh, JS, it was Zim 10. Uh, okay, so we're seven, seven versions past that, and so it would be even shorter or even smaller now. I am Dr. Abstract, blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah. You guys are probably wanting to get on and eat a cookie or something like that, but, uh, or, you know, go have a full dinner. Why don't you then? Uh, this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. 
just talking about some of the new things and in particular what's new with the site and the editor and the kids editor as well. Cheers. Have a great day or night. Come visit us at zimjs.com slash slack. <laughs> that is also what's new. No more slack. Zimjs.com slash discord. Zimjs.com slash forum. So that latter one is probably the best one. Uh, forum.zimjs.com is another way to get there. Cheers. <laughs>